Hey guys, it's T with Driftwood Gaming and I'm here with another MZ The Basics tutorial. Today we're going to go over the Event Commands tab 3. So the first thing that you'll see here is a box that says Scene Control and we have Battle Processing. So let's see what's in here. We can start a battle based on these parameters and it gives you three different options for how this battle will begin or who you'll be fighting with. You can have a direct designation and just choose from the available troops in your database or you could designate with a variable and that variable would have to cover the troops that you have available in your database. So you wouldn't want to use a variable 6 for, for instance because that just wouldn't work. You don't have a troop 6. And then you can also do same as random encounters and that will take the random encounter weight system that you set up for this map if this map does have random encounters and it will apply it to this event. Then you can also decide whether or not the party can escape or whether or not they can lose. Uh, the can escape and can lose are often used in pivotal point battles like cutscene battles or boss battles. And then we have shot processing and we actually already did this in an earlier tutorial so I'm just going to skim over this but if you'd like to create an NPC that will sell you things, shot processing is the way to go. All you have to do is double click in an empty space in this box and pick an item from your database. That can be an item, weapon, or armor. You can use the standard price, the price that's shown in the database for that item, weapon, or armor, or you can specify the price. And then you can also specify whether or not the shop is purchase only or if you're going to allow the player to sell as well. And then we have name input processing. If you have an event that allows for name input processing, it will open a window where the player can name their character. And you can specify how many characters are allowed in the name. That is how many letters are allowed to spell the name. Next, we have four options that will just run a command immediately if you put them in your event. And that is open menu screen. If you have this, it will open the menu screen. Open save screen. Again, it will open the save screen. Game over, which will bring your player to the game over screen. And return to title screen, which will return your player to the title screen. Then we have system settings. In these, you can choose to change your battle background music. And we've seen this interface before. You can also change your victory music, your defeat music, your vehicle background music. You can change save access. If you click disable, your player can't save unless you then re-enable saving at a later time. You can also change whether or not your player is able to access their menu. You can change whether or not there are random encounters. You can turn them off completely. You can change whether or not the player is able to change the formation of the party. You could change the window color and uh, you might want to do this if you have a certain color during for, for one mood and maybe another color for another mood. This could be super cheery or tranquil and then this one can be when you're really angry. It's up to you, but you can use this to change your window color. You can also change your actor images. You can pick which actor's image you're going to change from this drop down menu and change either the face, the character, the battler, or all three or a combination of two. You can also change your vehicle image the next section is the map section and you can change the map name that you display and this is the name that's displayed when your character enters the map. You can turn this on or off. You can change your tile set and it gives you a drop down choice to pick any tile set that you have currently set up in your database. You can also change the battle background and this will last as long as you're on this map or if you manually change it back. You can change your parallax and you get to choose from your parallax images and you can decide whether or not it loops horizontally, vertically, or both. And then you can get location info. This is immensely useful and you'll probably wind up using this quite a lot. You will store your location info into a variable and we actually already have variable one being player location. And the info type that you can grab is based on terrain tag, event ID, layer 1, layer 2, 3, or 4, or region ID. I personally use region ID the most because using this coupled with regions makes it so that you can run a lot of events based on where your player is on the map. You can choose to find this information by direct designation. If you choose that, you can pick from a location on the map from this window. You can use designation with variables. And then the last one is actually an addition in MZ, and I'm very excited about this addition because it makes things easier. You can also choose designation by the player, this event, or any other event on the map. This is extremely useful because if you'd like to know whether or not your player is stepping on a certain terrain tag, 
layer, or region ID, for instance, all you have to do is pick player from this drop-down menu. It makes it so easy. And next we have the battle section. These events are used in troop events or common events used in battle, and I'm going to show you where you would put them. If you go into the database, you'll notice that you have a tab called Troops. And in this tab, you have what's called the Battle Event. You can double click in this section and have access to these battle commands right here, as well as all the other commands. This is where you would typically use these battle commands, but you can also use them in a common event, and I'll show you how that's done as well. If you make a common event, you can also double click in an empty section here and have access to the battle commands. And in order to use it in your battle, you would go to a skill and run your common event based on a skill. Items can also run common events during battle. So in these battle events, you can change enemy HP. You can decide whether or not this will happen to the entire troop or a specific enemy. You can increase or decrease, and you determine how much the increase or decrease will be either based on a constant, which is a number you type here, or a variable. And then you can also decide whether or not this change can allow death. You can change the enemy MP in very much the same way, as well as the TP. You can change the enemy state. You can either add or remove a state to the entire troop or a specific enemy. And you can choose which state from this drop down menu right here. You can choose to recover all the enemies in a troop or specify which enemy gets a recover. You can make an enemy appear. You can also make an enemy transform from one enemy to another. And then you can show a battle animation. Again, you can choose between the entire troop or one specific enemy. Then you can also choose to force an action. You can choose who is forcing the action, whether it be an enemy or an actor in your party. Then you can choose which action is being forced. And finally, you can choose which target the action is being used against. So you can use either the last target, whomever was targeted last, random, or pick from an index between 1 through 8, which is the maximum amount of enemies allowed in a troop. And then you can also abort battle. Finally, you can use a script call. Script calls are extremely versatile, and you can do just so many things. Almost as many things as you can think of you can do with a script call. I'm just going to give you one example today, and what we're going to do is increase our party's gold. This is going to give the party 99,999 gold every time we interact with this event. I'm going to show you a plugin that was launched with MZ, it's in your DLC folder. And we'll take a look at some of the plugin commands that it offers to see how this kind of thing works. So I chose screen zoom, and you'll notice here it says command name. You can pick your command name from a drop down menu, set zoom, zoom 200, zoom 300, or reset zoom. And for each one you have separate parameter options. Okay, let's test this event out. We're going to put our player right next to the event and give our event an image so that we can interact with it. Okay, you didn't really see much happen because we didn't do any kind of animation or gab window or, or dialogue window saying that we gained some gold, but if we look in the menu You'll notice that we have 99,999 gold. And if we talk to the guy again, it's gone up. Again, it goes up again. So you'll see that the script call works. So that's it. We've gone over every option on event command tab three. And in fact, in the last three tutorials, we've gone through every single event command. So hopefully this will give you the tools necessary to build amazing cutscenes, dialogues, party mechanics, game mechanics. There's so many tools here to use. Definitely check them all out and use them to your advantage. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and definitely come join us on the Discord. We have a lot of fun there. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!